Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Today is an exciting day because I got my first Etsy pen BBS order delivered. It took a little bit of time, but it's finally here and I'm extremely happy. So I got four items which pretty much filled up that standard size box that Bienna uses to package them for shipping. So we have two examples of the 486, which is a new model and has some very interesting features. So I'll be happy to present those to you. And I have two interesting resins, Galaxy and Moon River. And I got two more knives, basically because I wanted a vermouth one, because vermouth is one of the colors that I really enjoy and like. And I wanted a clear resin to see all the little bits inside and how the, the knife is put together. And then I got a dreamy which is a 113 color which I don't have any examples of and may only be a resin used for this particular knife. So we're going to dive into these details and we got some nice uh, new cat stickers that look like amber. I felt these two pens deserved getting out the turntable and some blue crabs to hold them up. Well, blue and purple crabs or too blue. It's late at night and the LEDs are playing with my color vision. But hopefully you can appreciate these two pens rotating around and how the light catches them a little bit differently and how that silver and gold cat look together. So we're going to wait for it to come around one more time and then we're going to explore more aspects of these pens for your viewing enjoyment. So the two pens have been unboxed and we're going to explore this 486 model. It is certainly something very different from Pen BBS. Let's start with Galaxy first. And there is like no difference in the outer diameter between the cap and the barrel. So that's kind of like that minimalistic design. And the cat looks cute. Not exactly certain, you know, what's going on with this. It looks like he has his paw over his nose. So I'm certain that's significant in some level. The Galaxy of Resin is just very intriguing, a very nice resin. I mean, when you first pick up this pen, the first thing you feel is it's substantial. It feels more substantial. I think a lot of the newer models from Pen BBS and I think the 355 and the 456 started that just have a substantial feel to it. It's not that the pen weighs that much. I think it's kind of like the density feels higher. And this cat certainly has a lot of weight to it. It's probably some type of cast metal. Could be like a pewter. Uh, when I was in jewelry, we used rubber molds to cast these types of designs. And what's nice is you can open up the rubber mold and you can get undercutting and things of that nature, which you wouldn't get with a normal mold. And I doubt if they did lost wax with this, which is another technique to cast metals into a very specific shapes. The cap comes off with one and a quarter turns, which is very nice. And we see here a silver nib to go with the silver cat. The section's typical pen BBS, but actually is a little bit longer than most of the pen BBS sections. It fits fine in the hand, unposted. It feels light. Because like I say, a lot of weight is concentrated in the cat. It appears that it should post. And it posts a little deeply. And if you don't do anything, it'll stay there. But... It's not secure. Again, it seems that Pen BBS is not that focused on designing pens to post. You know, the 480 post okay. This looks like it should post okay, but it doesn't. As we look a little bit closely at the gold cat, again, it's the same cat, just a different plating on the outside of it to give it a gold look. And this material is nice. Which one do I like better? Good question. 
and I'm going to plead the fifth. The cap comes off in that same a little bit over one and a quarter turns, and we see, to me, other than the 492, the first gold nib that Penn BBS has done to go with the gold cap. They've always been very good in their design and, and, and aesthetics and, and the pens that they produce and all the little details work. This step up is very rounded. You don't feel it. You feel the threads even more than the step up. And because of that long section, I don't think you're going to be holding it up here. But even if you did, it doesn't interfere at all with your fingers or anything else. It feels uh, comfortable. And this has the same issue as the Galaxy did. It, it appears that it would post okay, but it just falls off if, if you um, don't hold it upright. So I think the design is quite nice, quite interesting. And uh, we're going to compare it to a few other pens, and you can see how that cat just rolls down. You know, gravity, the pull of gravity has an effect on it. So we're going to look at some other pens of a similar design that I think we can compare these 486s to. We have the 486s disassembled as much as I could. I did my normal flushing of the nib assembly, and even with some water and soap there, the nib did not pull out. There's only so much pressure I'm going to do. I hold it by the edges of the nib to avoid crushing the soft fins and the feed. You know, the sections are well designed. That O-ring is above the threads, which is good. And the other thing they did with this design is the O-ring is a little bit more recessed, so the groove in there is a little deeper. I think, all in all, the resin's a little thicker on this model than previous models. And we can see... The cat. I think it's time for the LED. Here's what they look like with uh, just regular sunlight. Just a little bit of a different look, different light. It's uh, actually kind of diffused sunlight. Uh, we're about a, an hour away from sunset here. We're going to look at Moon River first, which I think is a very attractive resin. And if we look inside, We'll see down there towards the bottom of the cap is a little bit of metal showing there. So I think there's a small hole drilled in the cap that's near the top of the cat. And that's how it's secured. And I also think it's glued in addition to that. This is a fairly uh, transparent resin. Make a great eyedropper. And this pen, as with many pen BBS pens, is designed as a, a great eyedropper. The other thing that I notice is that ledge there that's machined to fit against the section is also a little bit thicker, so there's a little bit of a narrower part at the top of the cap. I think that also reinforces uh, whatever stress might be there from this cat. Let's look at Galaxy. We're going to try some different lighting with Galaxy, just to show off the resin. I just have two small LED lights, which we will extinguish and let the camera adjust. Then we're going to bring in the LED X-ray. And that kind of really shows that swirl pattern, kind of reminds you of a Galaxy far, far away. And there's the cat in LED light. Good to show off that relief uh, nicely. So let's look inside the cap. Then we'll use the LED as an x-ray. And it is uh, slightly translucent, not really transparent. But it's an interesting way of looking at this resin. Well, obviously, we need to compare the 486 Moon River to my 480 Moon River. 
to my 469 Dusk Mist and then the 469 the Misty Mountains and the Moon River Penrest. The Dusk Misk has a lot more blue in it than Moon River, which has some gray, a little bit of green. Also, it's a little bit more of the chunks of pearlescence in it. And Misky Mountain is just a swirl of nice dark blue and light blue. And then if we look closely at the pen rest we'll see again a different form factor of it and you can get to hopefully appreciate some of the nuances of this resin as usual I'm just super impressed with almost every resin from pen B BBS you know these are two interesting pens to compare they're identical in overall length The 486 just feels different. It feels a little bit more substantial. A little bit wider, you know, girthier. And obviously it has a gold cat on it. If we take a look at Dusk Misk, you'll see definitely that difference in the color. But there is a lot of uh, commonality in the way those chunks are, kind of like that cracked ice look that is common in a, in a lot of acrylics, sport acrylics like this. Yeah, I could look at these for a while. So how does the Moon River pen rest work with the Moon River 486? And it works fine, but that cat is really heavy and it doesn't really balance well you can see where that cat wants to turn around uh, i mean you could work on getting it to stay there but it wouldn't you know it's it's not something that's going to stand the test of time if you do that probably the most secure is where the cat is down i mean that's extremely stable you know you can get it to roll over the cat but you know, that's uh, not something that's going to happen normally, and you can get it to roll over a clip, too. So those that are concerned about a pen rolling, I think the cat does the job. But it does make the weighting of the pen much different than other pens, and I think that's maybe something somebody may have some challenges with. We'll see when we get to writing how I deal with it. So I only have one other Galaxy pen. I thought I had more, but I got it confused with Frostfire. And I did a video on... Frostfire and its associated resins. So the 486 definitely in some views is a little darker but that's because of how the pearl essence is mixed in with this so it has a orientation to it. But I think overall the 486 is a slightly darker resin but I think that might just be because this wall is thicker when they did the machining. I mean both of these feel substantial in the hand. You know, clip versus cat. Silver versus silver. Chrome versus a little bit of a matte finish there. So that's comparing galaxies. The one pen to me that comes closest to that minimalistic look of the 486 is this Enso. It's a titanium pen. As you can see, the cap and barrel match. It's even a little bit girthier than the 486. No clip and no roll stop, but it is titanium, so it's pretty indestructible. And then obviously the M2 comes to mind, the Moon Man M2. Again, simplistic look, barrel and cap, same diameter. It's obviously a smaller pen and obviously designed for only eyedroppering. So it's a little bit different in form and function, but it certainly form-wise comes close to what they've done with the 486. And here's a full in one one that, again, I just brought it out because the cap and barrel are the same diameter. This is a much different design. It's a much uh, 
slimmer pen and it has flat tops instead of the pointy ends or the bullet shape, cigar shape of the other pens. So that's putting the design in perspective. So you may have asked, Chris, isn't there other pens that you can compare the 486 to? And I'll say yes. The next one here in the list is the 491, another pen BBS pen. 486, 491. I think the challenge I have is uh, I still have 492 on my mind, so I'm a little distracted. Here's a 380, which you can kind of call minimalistic because there's no difference in the difference between the cap and the barrel. And here's an Edison Pearl, an Ebonite, which also has that minimalistic design. And here's her Meru Pen or uh, Moon Man One Kai. Get, get different labeling, but that's also a minimalistic pen. So we're going to focus a little bit more when we get into the writing on the 486 and the 491. Here's my 491 collection. So we have Winter's Night Clear Dark Paint and Vermouth. Yes, I pulled a nib out of vermouth. I'm going to play around with uh, replacement nibs in that and see what I can come up with that I like. So the dark paint and the winter's night were $20 each. And the clear and vermouth were $14, which is pretty much on the low end for a pen BBS pen. I think it's apropos to compare the 486 to the 491. Both of them are... Pens would have similar design characteristics to it, that minimalistic design where the cap and barrel are the same uh, diameter. And the, here's the diameter between those two. They're fairly close and a little bit thicker than most other pens. The 480 is, is less than 13 millimeters, so there's a millimeter over a millimeter difference in that outer diameter. Here's the weights between these two pens filled with ink. And to me, what you notice is, is that the cap on the 486 is just heavy. And the fact that it doesn't post, unlike the 491, the 491 posts, but it is long, but it certainly is usable and it uh, stays on, unlike the uh, 486. To me, here's my editorial comment is PMBBS responded to uh, discussions about roll stops. Maybe the full 017, which came with that snake roll stop that was removable, maybe that prompted them to come up with this 486 model. So they did a little bit different design, and um, certain BNE had an influence as putting a cat as the roll stop, something unique, something different. I do have some cat roll stops coming. Uh, you may have seen that in, in Doug. Uh, videos on uh, his roll stops that he had. So to me, the 491 is a writer's pen like the 323, and they address some of the deficiencies in the 323 that people complained about, like no posting. The 486 is not a writer's pen. It's aesthetically good looking. It's a nice classic shape, but the weight of that cap to me precludes it from being a great writing instrument. It does feel good in the hand. It is a little bit thicker acrylic than the 491, which also contributes a little bit to the extra weight, but not significantly. Um, and those weights I showed were inked, and I do have the 491 eyedropper. It wouldn't be an appropriate comparison if we didn't talk about costs. Both of these only have a few available on uh, Etsy. I haven't checked uh, eBay, but they're generally pretty close um, in uh, pens. So the 491 starts at $14 and goes up to $30, and the ones that are left are all in the $14 to $20 range. The 486 starts at $23, so there's a $9 upcharge, which I'm assuming is primarily because of that cat roll stop. And it maxes out at 32. So the difference in the high end between the two pens is fairly close. But on the low end, in getting into using these pens, uh, there is a significant difference in price. So I have discussed the advantages of the 491 model over the 486 model. But as I put it down on the desk, 
The 491 will definitely roll away, so you need to be careful with it when you put it down, where the 486 will definitely not roll away. There's no question about that. So, if rolling away is something you're concerned about, then the 491 may not be a pen for you, and the 486 might be, or you could put some type of roll stop of your design on the 491, but I just like the minimalistic look. And yeah, sync took me a, a little bit of time, but I have this sample of Colorverse Photon, and I think it fits into the color scheme of the Moon River. And the Chromatography is not as much of an interest as many, but I wouldn't use this in any water-resistant environment that you needed. It's really a, a blue-green. So I talked about having some type of color reference to use. So I was looking around. Um, I grew up in my business using Pantones in the 80s, but... I couldn't really find anything that made sense, and I'm certainly not into investing a lot of money in it. So I got this color wheel, and what's interesting is we have green, blue-green, green-blue, blue, and of course over here is violet-blue. If we put the color verse here, it definitely is a light blue-green, and certainly not a green-blue based on this color wheel. Hopefully that helps out and maybe gives you some balance to colors on this camera on your computer. So we're going to start first with the 486. I get feels good in the hand, but like all the Pen BBS acrylics, it just has a great feel, great polish. It's just top heavy. Kind of reminds me of uh, tennis rackets. Some people like top heavy and some people don't. I particularly like it either balanced or more weighted towards the handle if you want to put mass into the racket. So to me, if you want to put mass into a pen, you put it centered, like the brass uh, sections or copper sections on the Keras Custom pens that I really like, or the Lawyer pen from Sailor, where you have a weighted section, which seems to just improve the writing experience. The cap does come off with just uh, one and a quarter turns, which is nice. And it does fit fine in the hand, unposted. And it is very light. As I mentioned, this feels light. It's the cap where most of the weight is in. And if you need to put the cap someplace, you can put it on top of the barrel. But if you do anything, it's just going to come off. It doesn't stay there. The section feels good. It's a little bit smaller than the 491. So here's those section dimensions. We've already discussed weight. So let's see how this gold-plated fine nib writes. So my first impressions when I touched nib to paper was, this is a great nib. It's in the family of the 492. If the 492 is a 10 nib, this is a 9 nib. It's that good. So maybe Penn BBS has done something to their fine standard nibs with that little bit of a Fude upturn. Or maybe the gold-plated ones have a higher quality level. I don't. Again, at the end of the day, we can theorize all we want, but what's really nice is that this nib just feels great on paper. And this is the fine nib. So we're going to rate this pen. I'm going to give it an 8.6. And just one check for the nib. I'm not a fan of the design. I'm not a fan of the cat on there as a roll stop. If it was removable, which people probably didn't want, it would be better if they made it without the roll stop. 
I would also enjoy that too and take $10 off the price and it would be a winner and it would write, put up that rating a little bit higher. So we need to compare this to the 491 which has a medium nib. So, so this is a uh, Lamy Azurite, which I almost put in the 486 and I'm glad I didn't because now we have a, a, a good comparison. And the medium is definitely a darker line. It's also a darker ink, so it's not a one-for-one -one comparison. And it is a little bit wetter. So if this nib is a, I forget what I said, 9 or 9.5, then this is a a 9.6 or a 9.7. It is better in my mind from a writing experience, but then I like wetter, wider lines in my writing experiences. This is a little bit more sensitive to angle than the fine nib. Um, also writing over the camera, I tend to lose track of the nib and orientation, so you have to take that into account. But if you have it placed properly on the paper, this just consistently writes down a nice line. And with less pressure, it's a much finer line. And with more pressure, it opens up a little bit. And almost like double the width. And I do have a heavy hand. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a new model from Pen BBS. I definitely think it's worth a look and I definitely I'm happy that I was able to pick up a few and they eventually arrived uh, with all the challenges in China now. I'm happy to at least uh, help them out a little bit as I can. So I've reached the end of this video, so thank you for watching. May you find a pen that you love, and it could be the 486. It's just not the best pen for me. It is comfortable in the hand, and like I say, if you avoid the cat, that heavy element in the cap, then uh, it works well. It's a good size. Get out there and get some pens and get some ink and get some paper and start making them work. Great combos, and I think a great way to put your thoughts into context and be able to reflect on them later and share them whatever you want to do. So it's the end for now. And we're going to say bye until the next video. I like the way it writes and I like to sync.